Hey, Michael, I don't know about you, but I, I take quite a bit of, of solace and comfort uh, knowing that a restaurant employee, like if something ever go down, that I'm in good hands. See, a lot of people, they make their restaurant choices based on other factors, you know, like cleanliness and service and, and, and quality of food or, or menu variety even. Me, on the other hand, I like my employees to be versatile enough to give you them hands if necessary. Uh, you know, like look at this when my dude. man went in the Waffle House, he didn't know he was getting a two piece. He didn't know he was going to leave with a two piece. <laughs> oh, wow. So when they say we must protect this house, they mean we must protect this house. And I knew Tori would enjoy that because honestly, I had not seen that viral video until I'm texting to radio and they're like, hey man, you want to come on and talk some of these fascinating storylines from New US Open? He like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. You seen these Waffle House videos? I'm like, of course I've seen the Waffle House videos. So Tore was going down this rabbit hole of Waffle House fights. So what's your Waffle House fight take, Tore? Yo, it's going down in Waffle House. Come for the waffles. Head for the MMA. It's so amazing. <laughs> this is better than the milk crate challenge because people are getting thrown oh, over the count. It's beautiful. It's it's so much. I love it. Look, this brother stand. He's standing. Great time to stand your ground. He stand his ground. This is more wow. action than you get a Floyd Mayweather fight. I hope He's this dude is the manager now. I hope he got a raise. Like because uh, usually employees okay. are like, hey, it ain't my money. It ain't my it ain't my establishment. I'm not about to put my life on the line. My man put his life on the line. To protect this hey. smothered, covered, or scattered, or whatever it is, you know. What I'm saying? I think he's right. Like, I, I think he's protecting the the, the sisters. Employee of the year, not the month. And he's like, I'm not having that. Hey, Teray yeah. and Mike, look, I, I'm fascinated with, with writing about uh, football, football teams, and scouting, and all this stuff. Look at my man's legs, though. Like how his legs don't. He never loses leverage. Look at this. He's not going backwards. No. He's he keeping. Look, he's stand. still driving. It's yeah. unbelievable. I I mean, he, 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 great technique. Wild makers, but he, yeah, they're really wild just, really he's, he's keeping his, like he's keeping his base right the entire time. Hooks. He's not really punching straight. It's kind of like a rat, and it's no. still connecting. There's right. no, no defense whatsoever in street fight. It's just straight. Who, but right. he, he, he launches he like won seven because in a row. of who got that kind of stamina. And no, he, he, he wanted it. That dude's wiry strong. He wanted it more. His technique was flawed. But his commitment uh, was was unquestioned. Okay, moving on to uh, more serious matters, shall we? Uh, the He's U.S. Open, weird. and uh, Yo, specifically, uh, want to focus matter, on. What is that? If you get your ass kicked at Waffle House, that's a serious matter. But I understand what you're saying. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that, well, that's that's true. Yeah, but we but we we got our jokes off. Um, I want to get to uh, the significance of sun what we saw on Sunday. Was uh, was two brothers uh, at Ar Arthur Ashe Court, or Ar Arthur Ashe Stadium, excuse me, uh, near a statue of Althea Gibson, uh, and just the, the the cultural significance. And as you wrote about in the Grio, no losers uh, in a rare U.S. Open uh, black men's uh, matchup. Um, and so whether it was uh, Big Foe, um, FAA as they're called for short. Uh, we saw something that was just bigger than uh, a U.S. Open match with the opportunity to go uh, a U.S. Open fourth round match. It was bigger than that. So uh, we have a snippet of your of your column in the Grio, um, but I'll let you speak for yourself if you want to just kind of speak to just the no, future of American men's tennis with a hell of a lot of melanin in it. <laughs> well, it was we a beautiful this match. Is, this, is, this, this is how you finish it, Tori. Hold on, I, I'll take care of it. It took a while for it to come up, but I'll take care of it. Uh, but as they heartily embraced at the net after it was over, it felt like there were no losers. It was a great night where two black men battled on a tennis court that so many great black players had battled on this year. Former Open champ Sloan Stevens and Naomi Osaka and probable future champ Coco Golf had played uh, on this court. And then you were, went on to write, they remain two of the greatest and most successful tennis players of all time so far uh, as black tennis goes, the modern generation. The one emerging from the massive shadow of Queen Serena Williams. This generation cannot say they're our ancestors' wildest dream. Not when our ancestors Althea and Arthur won Wimbledon and the U.S. Open and they haven't. But the modern generation is surely making their tennis mothers and fathers extremely proud. Floor is yours, Tori. 
Yeah, no, I mean, the FAA uh, TFO match was big and beautiful, and it was, it was, it was epic. It was like a fight in that they were just throwing haymakers. And lo you love to see people play tennis with, like, ice in their veins. Like, I'm going for it. I'm not, not pushing. I'm not, like, shrinking from the moment and playing defensively. I'm playing aggressively. I'm hitting the ball hard. I'm going for my shots. And man, there was an epic third set tiebreaker that really decided this thing. And from three all to uh, to seven six, when when FAA got set point, it was like everybody was making first serves, big first serves, point after point, and it was ace service winner, one shot point winner, bam, 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 and it was like you know, okay, Corral, who's got the biggest guns? I got a big gun. I got a bigger gun. I'm banging. I'm banging. And these two guys, they're both the sons of African immigrants, but they came to this moment mm -hmm. in really different ways. FAA is the son of a coach, uh, and he plays with this silky, beautiful style. It's very classic-looking tennis. This is the way you would teach a junior how to play. And TFO right. is not quite that. He plays a little more awkwardly or idiosyncratically, if you want to be more uh, diplomatic. You know, his dad was the, the, the groundskeeper at this tennis club, and they said, I mean, like, they, they yeah. Slept, they slept, they slept in, 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 a, uh, in a training room, um, you know, at, at the club where his dad worked. I mean, I, I, w I want to focus on, on TFO in particular. Uh, you know, yeah. Azure Ali Asim, you know, Canadian uh, TFO uh, American. I wonder if, if TFO it, does he have enough? I mean, he has an incredible story, which you just alluded to. I just, yeah. Macro, does he have enough to be the future of American men's tennis? I don't know. I mean, like, you know, face. is he or your present? I mean, he's number 50 in the world now. He'll be higher than that because he had a nice win over Rublev and got to the fourth round of the U.S. Open. Um, you know, I look, look, America's history, tennis history. So we're so spoiled. You know, we're used to guys being number one and being there on the final Sunday, be it, you know, the Arthur Ashe generation or the Jimmy Connors generation or the McEnroe generation or the Sampras Agassi Courier era you know, or, or, you know, even like Andy Roddick was up there for a while. So, you know, you know, even like, you know, women of, you know, from Chris Everett on right on through to, uh, 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 you know, Serena and Venus, like we're used to, you know, like, you know, winning and being the best country in the world at this thing. So, you know, a guy like TFO is has a lot of character, you know, people love rooting for him. He's very good at like interacting with the crowd and getting that U.S. Open crowd on his side and uh, you know but i mean like you know we want to see top 10 top five and he has not he i think the highest he's ever gotten is 29. So, you know and the, high, the furthest he, he ever got is quarterfinal so there's you know he seems get there i don't think so i don't and i don't want to i don't want to seem like i'm hating yeah. i don't i don't i don't see the ability to get to the top 10. And that doesn't mean that we can't root for him. That doesn't mean that we won't enjoy watching his career over the next five years, however longer he's able to stay up there. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, and, and, you know, I hate to be pessimistic, but like, I'm not sure that it's okay. that top 10 and top five is for him. I don't know. Okay. All right. This, well, one, one more question on this. You know, when Tiger was doing his thing in golf, started doing his thing, even though he wasn't the first uh, black golfer, people said, oh man, this, this impact will, this is gonna just ripple. It's gonna have ripple effect throughout the generations. It's gonna have more people of color involved in golf. Have you noticed that? I mean, like, as you pointed out, I mean, Venus Serena and Serena have been dominating tennis for a long time. Uh, two black sisters at the top of the sport. Uh, we saw what we saw yesterday at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Do you sense any kind of Hey, some kids saying, I want to do that. Black kids in particular. I do see a number of people who are on the tour now, because Serena and Venus have been doing this for a very long time. There are people on the tour now 
who are like, I grew up idolizing Serena and or Venus, and they made me interested in playing tennis. Um, you know, hard to quantify, but like I definitely see there are there is a community of people who are like, I idolized them and I wanted to be more like them, and they drew me into this. Um, and there is a significant black tennis uh, community in the pro on the tour right now, from Madison Keys to Sloane Stevens, Coco Goff, Naomi Osaka, um, Chris Eubanks is rising up on the men's tour, come out of Georgia Tech, very tall, huge serve. He's figuring it out. Um, a couple other people out there. There's a girl named Whitney Oswege, I believe you pronounce her last name, who was number one in the world as a junior. And she's been kind of coming up. She may, her name may blow up next year, the year after, something like that. So, I mean, like, there's definitely a lot of people on the tour, a lot of people making noise. I mean, like, we had this year um, Sloan Stevens, former U.S. Open champion, played Madison Keys, longtime pro in the first round. Yep. And the winner of that played Coco Golf, right? Like, so, I mean, it was yep. just like everybody sort of bumping into each other there. Um, Taylor Townsend isn't here this year. Great serve and volleyer. Um, she may be back next year. So, I mean, like, there's, there's folks who are bumping around the tour. Um, and, uh, you know, I expect to see more of them as more people come out of the teens yep. saying, yo, Serena is so inspirational. I wanted to be like her. Right. Hey, a couple other things we want to get to you real quick before we got to let you go. Uh, you are in Brooklyn. We lost Michael Kenneth Williams, uh, tragically found dead in his apartment uh, in Brooklyn, 54 years old. Would love uh, your quick reflections on, on his life and his work. And I don't know if you, you had a chance to cross paths with him over the years. I, I did interview him. I met him several times. Um, very deep brother, very powerful actor. I mean, like, he's the man behind one of the most important and memorable characters of the last 25 years in television history in Omar from uh, The Wire. And Omar is important not just because he's this great, suave, cool, badass murderer, um, but he was also openly uh, and, and flamboyantly gay um, on The Wire. So everybody's watching The Wire. The Wire was like the biggest, one of the biggest shows in America and in its day. And they're watching him cool as hell and yet also um, in love with, you know, men, pretty boys. And it caused for a lot of straight men a certain shock of like, well, I got to refigure what I think about gay men. And I know gay men are telling me, um, you know, he was iconic for them in that he helped recontextualize how people saw queer masculinity um you know michael was a good brother he was he was an activist he was fighting for police reform he was fighting for criminal justice reform he cared very much about these sort of things um you know and would go to rallies and would go to meetings and would educate himself on like what's really going on in these issues he's also somebody who struggled and was open about it he talked to me about it on my show um about uh, a long on and off struggle with 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 crack um, fell off the wagon while he was doing the wire. Um, so I mean, like you know, this was a present struggle in his life, and um, yeah. you know, it just shows you how addiction can grab a hold of you and not really let go, and it's hard to get out of its grip. Yeah. Hey, last thing, man, uh, before we let you go, and, and appreciate those thoughts, and, and check out. Uh, for those that didn't see us put it on the screen check out uh Torrey's remembrance of michael k williams on the grill where do you find the time god leah prolific um uh speaking of deep brothers i don't want to get into a donda versus certified oh. lover boy debate i don't oh, want to get into a drake kanye debate I, I swear but there's always a silver lining and like set aside their beef set aside their pettiness i just okay. want to know from you how great was it? However, it came about and he released a statement saying it did not come out under the circumstances that I was told it would come out. How great was it just to hear Andre 3000 just to hear a verse from three stacks for my money second greatest MC of all time. Just the man you want to talk about depth. You want to talk about powerful poetry. <laughs> Michael, I don't know if you heard it life of the party. Just how great <laughs> was it to hear three stacks Tori? You have you have 3k as number two MC of all time. 
mine, my list. Yeah, not I yours, know, I know. not Michael's. Yeah, my yeah, list. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, Black yeah. Thought, I know. I got Andre three thousand. I got who? Who's yeah. Black? Wow. Okay. All right. I mean, like the two incredible MCs. Um, you know, it's been an interesting explosion of hip hop over the last couple of weeks, and like. Donda is taking some time to like wrap your head around and understand. I really didn't like it at first. I'm warming to it a little bit, even though it's it's kind of closed off in a way that you know, like Dark Twisted Fantasy wasn't, and um, some of the Life of Pablo wasn't. You know, I I I, gr I grafted onto those much more quickly. Um, certified Certified Lover Boy was kind of like candy and that like right away i was like oh this is sweet i can dig this and as i kept going with it i was like really you know i mean like you know you know there's some there's some joints in there but there's been other kanye albums that had more and stronger hits to me and stickier hits for me so um you know i don't know i'm working my way through both of them i mean like both of them dropped well, long right. Fair enough. albums on us well, at the same time uh -huh. and it was like there's a yeah. lot to take in here I, and to figure out what's going on is. here. I can't get I can't get past the look on your face though. When Michael Smith said Andre 3000 second greatest MC, and then he said Black Thought first. He said you know two two good MCs. That was like the pat on the head. So uh, <laughs> give me your two. I mean give me your Sorry. top not five. Just give me your top two. Give me your top two. I mean top you know I I I I look at careers. You know, longevity is part of it. Complexity is part of it. I see Michael taking complexity into account with with thought and and Andre. Um, but lo longevity is also part of it. You know, popularity, at least within the serious hip hop community, is part of it. I mean, like it's hard to get past Jay Z and Nas as the two greatest of okay. all time. They've had wow. incredible. Like I know, I'm like surprised. everybody said that, but like. What, what I'm everybody says that because it makes a lot of sense. These are two D2 most I'm not gonna argue with you. careers Cause, in cause, hip hop history. Because here's what I'll say to you. Here's what I'll say to you as we let you go. At least I can say definitively, you know, infinitely more about tennis and music than you do about Marvel movies. <laughs> Cut his mic. Cut his mic. Don't let him jump it. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us. 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.